I'd made a large quantity of Grand Paulus fruit slice, I put it in a, you know, plastic Tupperware thing, ready to take with us. The next day the dog was going to go to the kennels for the week, but in the night he got up onto the table and devoured all the fruit slice, apart those bits that he couldn't eat, he tried burying in the corner of the kitchen. Sort of. It was a great barrier. Shove that in there. And break it all up. Grand Paula arrived in England, I think it was 1938. But she was Austrian. So it's an Austrian recipe that landed in Lancashire and has now come down from Cumbria to Lancashire. Now this I bought further north where we used to live from a Tupperware party. You know, people used to hold Tupperware parties in them their day days. <clears throat> and it was a bit of entertainment for the village. And you can put water in it and uh, it's cold for rolling in pastry. How does it need to be cold? Warm conditions for cakes and cold conditions for pastry. Uh, it turns out better. You're not supposed to stir it because that makes it sort of go into a lumpy mass. We lived in a tiny hamlet and to entertain ourselves we joined the Literary Society. And various other villagers went to the Literary Society and one of them invited us to tea and chatted to us. And then when the children arrived, she was called Grand Paula. <coughs> so the recipe is Grand Paula's fruit slice. She was a very generous hostess and if she invited you around for tea she'd have made something ready to um, present you with and uh, it was a an Austrian recipe which she'd got in her head it wasn't written down. Uh, so that's how we got the recipe and it's in my head now and you shouldn't turn pastry over you can turn it round to roll it but not over. It's got a big warp in it, so it's not flat. So you get pastry that's slightly thicker at s thicker in the middle than it is at the sides. Pick it up. I'll make it spread when I get it there. You don't want to stretch it. You mustn't stretch your pastry because then it shrinks while it's being cooked. And then you get pastry that's too, even more too small than this is. I did wash my hands earlier. If it's not pressed well down, um, the air underneath it will force it up and then you get wavy pastry. And I love apricots, so I left those overnight in some water to soften up. Yeah, you can have more cherries, yeah. Got loads of cherries here. It's more um, picturesque with more cherries in and it tastes better. Now here I'm going to judge this by hand because I don't know, I could try weighing it. So I use pounds and ounces, I'm afraid. Not um, the other stuff. I do use uh, modern pennies and pounds. <laughs> but for quite some years, I always used to convert prices to what they used to be before the uh, pound shillings and pence disappeared. And I used to price things by the price of a cauliflower. That's four, four ounces of um, ground almonds. Well, a cauliflower in pound shillings and pence would normally be about two and sixpence. Well, two and sixpence these days is just a minute. Uh, 15 pence or 30 pence, yeah, so it's a very small amount of money, yes, very small amount of money. That's called a dropping, dropping consistency, so it's got to be about that. I'll have to stick a bit more in. We're going to need some more almonds, I can see that right at this moment. I'm adding almond and egg and milk mixture. 
I mean, that wouldn't be much good, would it? You'd cut it into a slice and all the fruit would fall off. So this holds it all together. I need to make a new metal band around there for it. What is it? It's set. Uh, do this with it. Waste not, want not. So you don't just leave the bits left in the bottom of your bowl. Um, turn the oven down a bit because it's not supposed to be quite that high. Bake for um, 25 to 35 minutes. You wouldn't just leave that there. You wouldn't throw it away. You'd actually make a little um, patty. Tiny bit of stewed apple in that. And you have one bite size apple pie. And it needs a tiny little chimney to let the steam out. Cut it into smallish pieces because it's very rich and you would have it in um, a restaurant, I suppose, you know, a tea shop in Vienna, where they serve lots of delicious cakes, I believe. Never having been, I don't know. <laughs> mm. The dried fruit is superb, actually. Just that it just needs a bit more sugar. There's an Austrian saying, it's impolite to have any more than what you can push down with two hands. Well, it looks fantastic. Well, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. And I'm sure in Austria it would have been a lot sweeter than that.